So to start off, I'm going to open up Illustrator to work in. And we'll just make a tabloid size or so new file. File new tabloid. Let's say okay. Ah, uh, let's rotate it. <clears throat> By the way, in Illustrator, if you ever need to change the rotation of it, use your artboard. And here's your size up top here. So instead of 11 by 17, we'll do that. And now it's rotated and working good. From there. All right. To place an image, you know, just drag and drop. The Illustrator tends to work really well. Um, we took these photographs at a very, very high resolution. So don't be afraid that they're mega huge. Just scale them down and place it in here to work from. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. You can choose how big you want this to be, so if you wanted to crop off the edges or the top, I'm cool with that. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect for yours. But what you do need to do in your layers palette, put your photograph on one layer, lock it down, and then do a drawing on top of the other layer. If you really want to get fancy with it, you can drop the opacity of this one just so you can see, because sometimes when you start drawing these lines, it's difficult to see um, see where you're at. So maybe I want to select it. And in your transparency palette, this is where you can drop the opacity to do that. Uh, well, maybe 70%. Yeah, that'll work. Lock it back up. Only going to work on layer two. For this one, if you really want to get used to using your drawing tablet, you can use the, uh, the pencil tool or the paintbrush tool. I'd use the pencil just to make it simple. Remember, if you double click it, you can open up the options for this. Um, don't keep the smoothness so high. Keep it pretty low and also we'll keep the fidelity pretty high. Let's see what this will look like. But with the pencil tool, I'm going to choose none. I should be able to go on top of this and just draw off the shape that I want to work on. You can see it's not 100%. Ah, see how that I drew that shape but still it, it got off a little bit. So this is where you need to adjust your fidelity. What is fidelity? It's how, how true you are to a um, to the object, uh, to oh, the amount. Okay. And Illustrator automatically corrects things to a speed. It does, yes. Uh, okay. And I, actually, I should have paid more attention. So think of it this way: true to the actual with to your actual line within four pixels or within sixteen pixels. The more pixels, that's the more buffer. So eh, let's keep this small. So within one pixel, uh, it'll draw the line. So let's bring it down. Let's redraw this now. What did I want to do? That's the other thing. When I'm zoomed in, it will jump. Okay, so now I'll draw it off. Much better. So now I've got a line that follows it a lot closer. Like I said, this is just going to be a painting, so we're not looking for every thing to be 100% perfect. I'll leave it up to you. But I want you to draw off each of the major shapes to work with. So this will be your underpainting. And you would do this in a painting class to, um, to get where the objects are. If you wanted to work even quicker, instead of drawing each individual um, grape, draw off the major outline of it. And then go back in maybe make notations of there's a highlight, there's a highlight, there's a highlight. Everything else would be in shadow. There's a highlight, there's a highlight. There's the edge right there, so that's obviously important. There's an edge right there. Uh, let's keep working down here. So there's an edge. There's an edge with that shadow, so maybe I want to make little notation where that is. Same way for the apple. There's the edge of the apple, but there's the shadow edge right there. Here's my leaf. It's going to be fun painting. And I'm kind of losing it down there. But here's my shadow edge that I'm looking for. So there's everything that's really dark, everything that starts to get lighter. Another leaf down there. 
I'm challenging myself with glass, but you see there's a dark area right here. So I'll, but there's a little bit of a light area. So maybe I'll make a notation that something's there. There's the edge of my apple. Uh, here's the inner core edge. Maybe it wraps around this way. If you do want something to be perfect, so like this bottle obviously has a lot of straight edges, <clears throat> jump and use your pen tool and it'll go a lot faster. And you'll get a lot better results. Click and drag, click and drag. I can always go back and clean this up. There. That's obviously off by a little bit. Yeah. A will give you your white arrow. P will give you your pin. For me, that's, that's close enough. And then I'll go back in with my um, pencil tool and make some notation where little highlights are. There's the inside shadow right there. There's a little highlight. Uh, maybe a big old core. There's an edge right there. And oh boy, let's see here. Lots of little areas to work with. Major shape. And I am going quickly just for the sake of time. Since this is a still life composition, do pay attention to your cast shadows. So I'm going to go back in and get all these shadows that are falling on the table. where you turn on music and just zone out. Do y'all listen to podcasts at all? I listen to sermons, but I listen to podcasts. I listen to like one podcast, that's it. Do you ever listen to Matt Chandler sermon? Um, I haven't really listened to a lot of them here lately. Okay. I listen, listen to a lot of Spotify. Oh, yeah. I listen to uh, Welcome to Nightmare. Have you heard of that one? Hmm. Oh. Welcome to who? Welcome to Nightmare. It's, it's a mystery fiction type podcast. It's like Every day there's a story and it like continues the story. Huh. I don't know. For me, that's nice to listen to. I'm gonna listen to someone talk for an hour. <laughs> uh, three main ones I listen to is uh, Buddy Bachman, Paul Washer, and Eric Moody. But Spotify is my best friend since uh, I started doing digital art. Oh my gosh. I invested in Spotify Premium and I love it. Really? Uh, okay. I wish I could have Spotify Premium. Like, cause I can download. You can. I get it on my phone and download all the. Any playlist I want to mm -hmm. my phone, and yeah. I can just do it offline. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I want that so bad, but I have no money. It's not that bad because it's only a commercial. Like, because I really use Spotify mostly whenever I'm sitting at the computer and drawing, so I really don't need the mobile yeah. thing. Well, I work. It's just I work the commercials as a, that get annoying. Yeah, I work as a custodian at my church, so I can walk around and listen uh, to yeah. music all day. So yeah. oh, okay. it's pretty worth it. All right. Yeah, Mr. John had a cow that did that. <laughs> I work for him. The thing is, though, if you buy an album every, you know, month, it kind of, you know, pays for itself. Oh yeah. Anyway, were you saying something, Mr. Oh, when I was a uh, student for Mr. Hadaway, I would listen to music, and I would always forget to um, to plug in my headphones from <laughs> from whenever I was listening to into the computer. And so I'd just be, you know, playing music, and they would, I, I forgot how I had it set up, but basically everybody in the class was listening to whatever I was listening to. <laughs> Nobody would tell me. Okay, uh, let's see. But what I'm doing is I'm making notes for where all my shadows are, where the major edges are, and where all my highlights are. 
everything else, I, I just train myself to know where to blend and how to pick up uh, different areas. So I'm looking at, if I saw this bottle, all of this is going to be one shade of green. This area gets a little bit darker, this area gets darker. Here's my highlights. Same way for this one. There's my highlights. All of this will be probably, eh, maybe I'll give a little edge to right there, but there's one shade of yellow. It gets a little darker on this side. What I'm left with when I turn off my bottom layer is this. So this is my drawing layer, my underdrawing. And this is what I'm going to use to do my digital painting with. Uh, since I went very quick, it obviously looks very, very sketchy. But this is you know, what you would do if you were actually working with a, a real painting. You would do it in charcoal, or you would do it with um, some medium that would rub off once you do your painting. Really? So mm -hmm. in traditional media, they do this? Yep, in traditional media, they do it all so the time. So they just take like um, a picture of the image that they're going to draw, and then they go over with with chalk and trace the outlines? That's, yeah, for illustration, that's one way. You could project it onto your canvas and then draw oh, it off yeah, that way. That's true. Um, if you're really good, you would actually just do a regular sketch drawing right on the canvas of what you were looking at. Okay. Mm -hmm. In my illustration class, when we do that, you will, you're, it's okay to print off and trace off everything. Well, um, I just heard that tracing is like wrong. It is if you're a fine artist, but if you're an illustrator and you got a week deadline to meet, then it, it comes in handy. It's a great learning tool, but train, definitely want to train your eye to do hand-eye coordination. And also, if you're tracing your own work and you just don't want to sit there and do it again, then not so bad. Yeah. I'm saving this as an EPS file, just a vector file. Um, all the computers have CS6 on them now, so don't have to worry about saving down unless, unless you have it on your own computer. <clears throat> and then we'll... Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say with EPS? Is in, hmm? You say Photoshop is EPS? Oh, um, I'm saving it as an EPS file just for the format, and we have version CS6 now. So, oh, the, the, yeah, on, on all the computers, so... Um, the Mr. Taylor finally yeah, um, got to deal with it? Yeah. The, um, Why did it end up being? CS6. For like, everything. For everything. All cloud? No. no. Okay, so he didn't have to do cloud. Yeah, not creative cloud. Yeah. Um, one step below. He was he was complaining about having to possibly go to cloud for every computer. Yeah, that would be very expensive. Okay, so for my, um, my Photoshop setup, like I said, most... Professionals work in just pixels, but since I already set mine up as a tabloid size, I'm going to keep it regular tabloid just as a high resolution. And I'm going to change my color mode to RGB. Since we're not printing these off, uh, RGB will give you a lot more colors to choose from, and it'll give you a little bit truer color. So don't worry about CMYK for all your projects in here. We're just going to keep it at RGB. Would you ever recommend going higher than 300? Uh, because one time, like, I literally knew nothing, and I started doing a drawing, and I was like, well, the more pixels I have, the more I can zoom in, and mm -hmm. I tried to use 500, uh, mm -hmm. and it made my computer so yeah. slow. It, it's I was a, just wondering. It's a trade-off. You, know, you can see at the very bottom down here, right now, it's at 48 megabytes, and that's mm -hmm. just with nothing on it. If I bump this up to 500 or 600, you're going to double that and still have nothing on it. And once you start adding layers and everything... So it, 300 is 300 pretty, is pretty good for most things. Yeah, for most things. Um, actually, 72 is good for a screen resolution. Um, but 300 is just a good kind of um, mid-ground. Mm -hmm. Good question. Let's see, I'm going to drag my EPS into Photoshop. <clears throat> Same thing. Um, 17 and no, height should be 17. There we go. As long as the resolution for my EPS that I open up is the same for the document we created, everything should flow pretty well together. So there's my underpainting. All I'm going to do, I found it's easier just to click on the layer and drag the layer over. And so now I've got that layer inside of here, and I can move it around and position it wherever I need to. All cool? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just so difficult. All right, we're going to zoom in. Click on things and move them around. There we go. And scale it up. The other thing to kind of address your uh, problem you were having with the, the line gap 
especially once you start selecting different areas and painting and things. If I was to open up my EPS file, uh, when you start drawing, let's see, I'll just make a new one. So I chose my pen tool and set my drawing color, whatever I want to do. Set your stroke width to be half a point, quarter of a point. It's going to be harder to see, but it will give you a, a thinner line to, uh, to work with from here. So we are going to take that underlying drawing and use that to, uh -huh. yep. create. to, to create what you're working on. So now I'm in Photoshop. And this is where I'm actually going to do my painting painting to, uh, to work from. Um, first thing I'm going to do, and this is a technique Mr. Smathers uses in his painting class. I'll grab my paintbrush. On my background layer, I'm going to change this to more of a mid-tone to work from. <clears throat> the reason why I want to do a mid-tone is right now if I'm looking at my painting, everything is white. And you know if you divide up everything into tones, there's usually about 10 different tones your eye can differentiate from. Well, this I'm working from one end of the spectrum, the white end, and I'm having to go darker. If I filled it in with a, um, there's my fill color, with like one of these mid-tone grays, like this one, now I'm working from my, well, make sure all layers is turned off. Now I'm working from the middle point, and so when I go to paint in my highlights, I can tell you exactly what a good highlight would look like working from there. I can actually paint in my highlights. Whereas if I'm working from a white background, I'm not painting in any highlights. I'm, I'm um, kind of working around those highlights sometimes. Uh, this will definitely come into play once we start doing other types of drawings as well. But we'll, we'll work with that. All right, so another thing I'm going to do a little bit different is rather than putting my solid color layer on top of my painting, I'm going to put it underneath it. Right now I have it on top, and the reason, and so if I started painting on this, it's going to cover up my lines. Got my opacity turned down. Well, I'd kind of like to see my lines to work with. So what I'm going to do is just drag it underneath my underpainting. Now I can see exactly what, where I'm at and where I want to paint. And this one is going to be a little bit more loose. So I'm not using my selection tool to make a selection. I'm actually carefully painting around a different area. Uh, of course, that bottle is green. So I'm is there a reason you're doing white? No, I, I just happen to have white selected. Um, I'll use Nicola's method. So if you were method. actually painting it and it was a green bottle, you would use green? Yeah, yeah, I would actually use green. I'll use your method, Nicola, of actually dragging my picture. Did I say it wrong? Yes. Nicola? Yes. Nicola? Nicola. Nicola. Okay. Nicola. There's no emphasis on the M. I'm sorry. Nicola. It's okay. <coughs> Nicola. Don't ever say that. I've heard that every time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a, just keep a small painting up here on there. That's a good little method to work with. What you can do, since, hey, we're working digital, we don't have to mix up paint. Make sure you're on the right layer, though. Hold down your option key when you've got your paintbrush. Pick up the green color from this one. And now I can paint inside of it. And all I'm doing is going really, really quickly over this bottle. Maybe I'll just work on the bottle and one other thing to show you today. I'm not worrying about bleeding into another shape because all I can do is just go back and redo it. But for this layer, all I want you to do is the solid colors. Then we're going to use the clipping mask technique to add the shadows and the highlights. And clean everything up from there. That's actually going to be dark anyway. So all I'm doing is adding pixels to this layer. Pick up maybe that yellow, put a little yellow on that side. moves into red, so maybe I'll put some of that. We'll move it around, put a little bit of red into there. And it gets a little green on this side. I'm also using a hard edge brush. Um, later on when I start blending, we'll soften it up. Do you ever use a smudge tool to blend? I do. That's We're going to get into, um, that's another technique that it's not, you shouldn't use it that much. Um, like most people say that unless 
like it's better to use shades than to mm -hmm. smudge because I mean I don't know I've never gotten a good effect. From the smudge. the trade off on it using the smudge tool will give you what's called a painterly type of effect. It'll look like a painting, and so if that's what you're going for. If you're wanting a painting to look like a painting. Uh, you can use the smudge tool and, and blend it together. If you want a little more reality, use um, use the actual paint. It's a, a, a shade or a highlight of that, or tint or shade of that color from there. Good question. And this one gets a little darker underneath here. But because I'm not working on my line side, I'm not really worried about losing too much of it. But all I'm looking at are basic, basic shapes. Notice I've got my um, thing turned on, pressure sensitivity. So as I get closer <coughs> or um, smaller areas, I can get into little details and not have to worry, worry about stuff. OK, I'll just do these two for now. I've roughed in the colors to work with. If you need to clean up the edges, just use your eraser tool. Uh, one thing I like about my bamboo is I can actually turn my pen over and it automatically selects my eraser. Does yours have that, Nicola? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks like a white eraser on the back of it. Yeah. Make sure you got the right color to work with. Okay. Then I can go back in, make another layer on top of it. Add the clipping mask, and I'm going to add my highlights and shades to it. Since I've got the um, thing pulled up here, I can easily select what I want my highlight and shade to be. So I can start off maybe really dark, and you can see it gets a little bit lighter moving up here. So, And here's my line, so I know how far over I need it to be. Maybe I make the edge really, really soft, drop my opacity. 20% and I can very quickly, very slowly. I'm going to turn on opacity for changing the size of it. There we go. So now very gingerly I'm blending it in to paint. Hey Mr. Cook, do you, do you know where the view camera is? 4x5 camera? No? Wait, for the department? I know we had one. Have had for many years. Oh, okay. It's I about know. the size of. Oh, the oh. Um, I do not know. It's in a, uh, one of those commercial, you know, metal mound mm -hmm. cases. Hey, Nick. Hey. I told uh, Josh to keep me posted on y'all's next meeting. Yes, I need to type up those notes too for you. Hello. I'm talking to her about publications, skills. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I was there last time. You know, photocopy what you took by hand, if you will. I mean, you know. Okay. Anything that's an action or, or information, uh, Vicki puts in the minute she sends out. Ah, I see what you mean. Okay. Like, whatever you do is appreciated. Thank you. Painting, painting. Since I know it's going to get from darker to lighter up here, I can go ahead and select whatever color it will blend into and start blending this top. Do random professors just like practice? Sometimes. <laughs> and if I turn off my line layer, you kind of get an idea of how it's shaping together. Now my lines are still, they need to be cleaned up. I can always go back in and clean them up. Oops. But if I wanted to blend these two colors together, so I know it's a little bit red, a little bit of a highlight, add a highlight, Let's bring up my opacity even more. Very soft edge. If I want to change the color of it, so I wanted to blend that edge into it, I've got a soft edge brush. Very gingerly blend from one color to the next color. What are you doing? Are you just taking the 
yellow and a very yep. soft edge brush. Uh-huh. Okay. I've, I've chosen this color yellow and a soft edge. Okay. And I've got opacity. I can choose this color and maybe push it back if I've gone too far. Mm -hmm. Blend a little more into there. Maybe I shouldn't have added that highlight so soon. Always check your reference. Maybe it should be a little more yellow at the top. And you can go crazy with this. Ah, uh, let's see. You'll get to the point where you don't even need the lines. If you squint your eyes, actually, if I'm looking up at the screen up top, it's, it's starting to form up pretty good. Still very, very rough. And I'm not going to worry too much with the texture. Now, do notice that it gets a little lighter right in this area and darker down in this area. And I can either go into my highlights and shadows and start adding that on. Since I'm working on a clipping mask, choose my eraser. I'm just going to use this eraser and clean up the edge where I want it to be. <coughs> Swap over to my brush. Turn off opacity, maybe I want to put more stuff into there. Did you see how many times I'm readjusting my brush? There we go. The size of it, the shape of it, to get into a specific area. Maybe I'll go back into my... Ooh, too dark. By the way, Option Command Z will back out of your history. If you just hit Command Z, it'll back up once, or forward and back, but Option Command Z will back up in your history a little bit further. And yeah, drop my opacity so I can quickly or slowly build up this area. I'm squinting my eyes looking for certain patterns in the shadows. It's darker. Maybe right here it lightens up a little bit. This area is definitely lighter. I'm going to turn off my lines. So, I'm slowly getting there. So this would be the beginning stages of my entire composition. You see how it looks like a painting? It looks very, very painterly. Mm -hmm. This is what you would start off with. So keep it painterly. Keep it, I'm, all I'm doing is looking at broad, broad areas. I can, you know, it's by no way, by no means uh, very, very refined. As soon as I get my broad areas done, my highlights, my shadows for each one, then I start going in and picking up on the small, small details, like these little specks that you see on here. I would paint this entire thing in shades of green. Then I would go back in and add the little orange specks on top of that, because that's a small detail. I would go in from the sunflower and paint in every single area of this shadow to be the same color. And then go back in and say, oh, there's a warmer part of the shadow, and there's a cooler, and there's a harder, softer edge like that. So for your compositions, 
This is how I want you to start off and then move closer and closer into this one. Remember, use your clipping mask wherever you want to. You can see you can move back and forth between. Um, if you don't want to use a clipping mask, you can see you easily you can uh, start just selecting the area and paint in that particular color onto your uh, onto your canvas. Does that make sense? Okay. Tell you what, we got a little bit, a few more minutes to uh, to work on it. If you want to jump on a computer, we will just do your vector outline, get, oh, your, nice. get your vectors done, and um, that, you can have that to work on for the next week. Cool. Thank you.